Who should the developing world trust? The G7 or China? Leaders from the world's wealthiest democracies have agreed to fund a green and democratic alternative to China's Belt and Road Initiative, or BRI. It's part of a wider strategy by Western countries to push back against Beijing and what it says are its authoritarian policies and predatory trade practices. The U.S. wants to create a counterweight to Chinese investment, the Build Back Better World initiative, which will mobilize public and private capitals. A global infrastructure project to rival China's Belt and Road Initiative. The Belt and Road Initiative is a Chinese-led trillion-dollar infrastructure project that looks to recreate the ancient Silk Road. It took off in 2013 and is considered Chinese President Xi Jinping's signature foreign policy objective and looks to connect more than 130 countries across Asia, the Middle East, Africa and Europe. The US and many others, however, accuse Beijing of using loans as a debt trap. A recent report found that many of the countries indebted to China are very vulnerable, including eight that are at high risk of being unable to pay. Then, when predictably, these countries are unable to keep up with their repayments, Beijing can demand concessions or other advantages in exchange for debt relief. This is known as debt trap diplomacy. President Biden's G7 plan takes a cue from his own domestic infrastructure slogan, Build Back Better. His global version will be called Build Back Better World, or B3W. The partnership's goal is to raise enough money to close a $40 trillion infrastructure gap in developing nations by 2035. But the initiative has been criticized for a lack of clarity on how the plan would be financed and implemented. Well, there certainly is a risk because they are elevating uh, the expectations. And if they fail to deliver, I think that would certainly undermine confidence in the West, in the United States. So you have to be careful with these things. And a spokesperson at the Chinese embassy in London reiterated remarks from Xi Jinping saying, the days when global decisions were dictated by a small group of countries are long gone. According to the New York Times, Joe Biden used the summit to emphasize that the struggle in the post-pandemic world will be between democracies and autocracies. He made that clear at a following NATO summit where the transatlantic alliance for the first time labeled China as a threat. We talked about the long-term systemic challenges that China's activities pose to our collective security today. We agreed to do more to enhance the resilience of our critical infrastructures around the world. But when it comes to building infrastructure in developing countries, the West doesn't have a great track record. The top recipients of their aid aren't even the poorest nations, but ones chosen for geopolitical and economic reasons. And it's no different when it comes to international organizations like the World Bank or IMF. In many ways, Chinese and Western aid have a similar goal to boost trade and further political aims. Each year, about $2 trillion flows from the global north to the global south. That's aid, loans, foreign investments, everything. But you know what? $5 trillion actually flows back in the opposite direction, from the global south to the global north. First, through often shady financial activities, from tax evasion and illicit money transfers involving big multinational companies, to interest payments on debts that have already been paid off many times over. But even the G7 is divided on whether they should regard China as a friend or foe. Germany, Italy, and the European Union are concerned about risking their who trade and investment deals with Beijing and are weary of exacerbating what many analysts see as a new Cold War. These differences shed light on why Western countries have until now failed to come up with an alternative to China's BRI. And even with the B3W, 
which has no clear roadmap, it seems, for the time being, China will remain the only one building.